What is going on, my dudes? Welcome back to part three of the LEDGardener.com review of the HLG Quantum Board Kit. In the first video, we went over assembly for each of the three kits, and in the second video, we looked at some of the specifics, like how the boards are laid out, how to wire them in series and parallel, how to match drivers, etc. And now all we've got left to do in part three is to take some PPFD measurements and see what each of these kits is actually capable of. If you're not familiar with the term PPFD, what PPFD stands for is Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density. And this is just a metric to measure how much light that's usable by plants is falling on a given area per second. So PPFD is measured in micromoles per meter squared per second. Now, to count the number of individual photons that land on a space per second would be ridiculous. So instead, we use the unit micromole. And a micromole is equal to a whole shitload of photons, actually 602 quadrillion photons. So it makes life a little bit easier. As I first mentioned, PPFD is only taking into account light that's usable by plants. And we refer to this as PAR, another acronym, right? Great. PAR stands for Photosynthetically Active Radiation, and it refers to any light that has a wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometers, which is what plants use to undergo photosynthesis. Keep in mind that PPFD is not measuring the total light output of a fixture per second. That's PPF, which is Photosynthetic Photon Flux. What PPFD is measuring is this amount of light that falls on a given surface area instead. So per meter squared, per second, how many micromoles are hitting the area. And uh, PPF would be how many micromoles total is this fixture emitting per second. So that's, that figure is going to be much higher than what actually reaches the area that you're measuring for PPFD. Anyway, I think that'll about do it for a crash course on PPFD. Let's move on to the actual testing and results. The equipment that I used to test this was an Apogee SQ502 quantum sensor. This is their latest sensor that's got the improved response curve for LED lighting, measuring PPFD. And I hooked this sensor up to an XTEC TrueRMS multimeter. I took measurements in two different size spaces just because each of the kits has a different recommended flowering footprint. For the 90 watt kit, HLG recommends a 2 by 1.5 foot space. For the 135 watt kit, they recommend a 2 by 2. And for the 260 watt kit, they recommend a 3 by 3 for flowering. So I have two tents, a 2 by 2 and a 3 by 3. I took measurements for all three kits in the 2x2 just out of curiosity, and then in the 3x3 I took measurements just for the 260 watt as the other two kits would not really fill it out well. In each of these instances I took measurements at three different heights between the light and the sensor, 24 inches, 18 inches, and then 12 inches. Let's start by taking a look at the results for the 2x2 tent first, starting at a distance of 24 inches between the sensor and the light. Beginning with the 90 watt kit shown on the left, this 2x2 space is actually a, just a hair bigger than what HLG recommends. Like I mentioned before, the recommended footprint for the 90 watt kit for flowering is actually 2x1.5. So when you plop this thing into a 2x2 at 24 inches, the numbers are not really strong. I mean, they're still in the mid 300s in that first square foot, which is getting there, but is definitely not optimal at this point. So a 90 watt kit at 24 inches in a 2x2 doesn't work very well. Luckily we can bring that light down and it does get into some useful numbers as you lower the light, which we'll see soon. Bumping up those extra 45 watts to the 135 watt kit does seem to make a pretty considerable difference. At this same distance, it seems to add about 100 micromoles per meter squared per second. In the dead center we're looking at 470 and then an average of around 400 or 425 in the first square foot, and then dropping off in the corners to the mid 300s. If you go to the two board 260 watt kit, this thing absolutely kills it in a two by two. The two quantum boards take up just about the whole tent almost, lengthwise anyway, so the coverage is incredible in this thing. You get very even spread, like in the middle here, it's 800 PPFD in dead center, and then you know, about mid 700s in that first square foot, and it doesn't drop off much after that. You're still seeing high 500s or 600 
micromoles per meter squared per second around the perimeter, and this is definitely sufficient for flowering, although you can get even better PPFD by lowering it a bit. As I dropped each of these lights to 18 inches from the sensor, we're starting to see good strong numbers throughout every one of the kits. Even with a 90 watt, uh, at 18 inches it's looking a lot like the 135 did at 24 inches. We're talking 520 in the center and then uh, PPFD in the mid 400s around the first square foot dropping off into the 300s, low 300s around the edges. And we're getting there. This is close to about the minimum you'd want for PPFD, which I would say would be around 500 or so. And at 18 inches with the 135 watt kit, we're in that range. Dead center, I saw 730 micromoles per meter squared per second, and about an average of 600 in the first square foot, then around, you know, 400 or so in the perimeter on the two foot edge. The 260 watt kit at 18 inches is doing awesome. This thing is fantastic. We're seeing 1100 plus micromoles per meter squared per second right in the center, and then still high 600s around the outer edges of the two foot. So this thing is great for a two by two. And for my last test in the two by two tent, I dropped the distance from the light to the sensor to 12 inches. And in this case, dead center on the 90 watt kit, we're seeing a thousand micromoles per meter squared per second. And pretty decent coverage around the first square foot actually, with a minimum of about 500 or so, and a maximum of 800 and some. And then towards the outer edges, we're seeing again, you know, mid 200s at lowest, which is okay. The nice thing about these QBs is that they really don't throw a lot of heat. You know, most of it is absorbed by the heat sink, which isn't a lot to start with, but coming off the actual diodes themselves, there's not a ton of heat, so you can get away with running them pretty damn close to the canopy. So 12 inches might be a little bit close, that might be a bit too warm, but finding a happy medium between 12 and 18 inches would be the sweet spot for this 90 watt kit, I would say. You might notice that the numbers skew a little bit to the right on this diagram, and that's just because you shouldn't let me use the smart side of a tape measure. I think my center for the light was just a little bit off to the right, so that's why it biases to the right a little bit. Moving on to the 135 watt kit, we're seeing excellent numbers at 12 inches. In the middle, it is 1400 micromoles per meter squared per second, which is above and beyond what you need. The maximum that most growers are going to require for PPFD is about a thousand, and you really get diminishing returns as you exceed that number. So you need to start doing things like supplementing with carbon dioxide if you want to go beyond that 1000 and actually get something out of it because like I say up until that point you're getting good return for photosynthesis but once you exceed a thousand then it's not really worth it. If you check out the 260 watt kit the numbers are pretty ludicrous at 12 inches and there's no reason to run it this low really in a 2x2 two two because at 18 inches and even 24 inches this thing was already rocking that 2x2 two two, so 12 inches is just unnecessary for this much power. That's going to sum up the testing that I did for the 2x2 space. Now the 260 watt kit is recommended for 3x3 actually flowering. So I did some testing in a 3x3 space as well with some reflective walls. And that's what you're seeing right now. This is at 18 inches on the left and at 24 inches on the right. And true to what HLG says, it's more than capable of, of providing enough power to flower in a 3x3 tent. 18 inches, I think, is your best bet. It looks like really solid coverage throughout the entire thing at 18. 24 is getting a little bit low, but still adequate. However, I would recommend dropping it down just a little bit. At 18 inches, we see very good, strong coverage that extends right to the edge of the 3x3. In the middle, around that outer ring, we've got 600 PPFD, 500 and then about 400 on the top and the bottom. And it does drop off in the corners, but that's bound to happen, of course. And for two boards that are sitting smack dab in the middle of this three by three, I'd say the coverage is pretty damn even. Wow, okay, that's it, I think. Just a few final thoughts, I guess, at this point. When I first saw these lights come out, I thought, man, those things are sweet. I saw the specs and I was thinking, okay, well, it's going to cost me a small fortune to get these things up into Canada, so I'll just make like a DIY version of it. And I did. I ordered these Samsung LM561C strips and built my own light using aluminum 
C channel or U channel or whatever you want to call it. But man, by the time I was done, I don't think I saved any money at all. The part where it gets really expensive is trying to make your own heat sinks for these things. And God, like I'm embarrassed to say how much I spent on those stupid aluminum U channels that I bought for my DIY versions. So if I were to do it again, honestly, I would not do it myself. I would just buck up and spend the money to get them from HLG. And another thing too is the fact that I had to put in so much work to build those things because I had to wire every one of those strips together and mount every one of them to those little U-channel heat sinks and get them all assembled onto a couple rails. So that was a real pain in the ass. And I sort of wish that I would have just went with one of these boards and paid the extra money to get it up to Canada anyway. If you live in the States, it really does not make sense to do it yourself. If I had to pick the most negative thing about these quantum board kits, I would say it's simply the fact that it's so hard to get your hands on one. It seems like HLG sells out of these things like immediately as soon as they announce that they've got some in stock. Everybody grabs them and uh, everybody seems to like them so they buy them but it makes it very difficult for somebody who wants to try them for the first time to actually get one. So I guess as far as negative things go, that's pretty good. I mean, it's a good problem to have but it, like I say, it does suck for people that are trying to get them and can't. As for my list of pros for these boards, I would say the top of my list is the performance of the product itself. These things are fantastic. The efficacy is amazing. The kits were all really easy to assemble. And when you hold the different components in your hand, they just feel like they're quality components. You know, they feel like they're not going to break or crack or anything. They, they just feel well made. Something else that I was really impressed with too was HLG's customer service. When I first got these things, I had a couple questions and I sent them off and I was really surprised at how quickly Robin had returned my emails. And the guy is really passionate about this stuff and it really shows just based on how much he knows about the product and how much he enjoys talking about it. So I was very impressed with the customer service that I got from these guys. All right, that's it. We're wrapping this up. That is all for the Horticulture Lighting Group Quantum Board Kits review. Thank you for sticking around and watching all three of these. If you haven't watched the first two, check them out too. And if you're looking for more information on these kits, go to www.horticulturelightinggroup.com and check out their QB Kits pages. If you have any questions, also feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do to get them answered for you. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.